Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll continue our series on audio by doing some basic editing and using the audio mixer. So what I want to do today is I have uh, two clips and three sound bites and I just want to edit a basic sequence out of them. But before we do that, let's have a look at the uh, single clips. There's one clip of some pre-edited footage. And uh, if, as you can see here, it's a, a stereo clip. Second clip, same thing. And then there's the sound bites, which were recorded mono. So they are mono tracks as well. It's generally a good idea to make the stereo clip stereo and the mono tracks mono before you start your editing, because after you've cut your sequence, again, it's kind of difficult to make uh, a mono track stereo. Also, a pretty good idea is to check out the panning and uh, the general levels before you edit stuff into your sequence. Because for example, if you have a lot of sound bites on a single master clip, you just need to do the panning once in the source uh, clip and not whenever you've edited it into your timeline. So uh, let's check out the panning. The stereo clips are panned to the middle. That makes uh, a lot of sense. They are stereo and we want to keep the panorama the way it is. So let's leave it there. But the sound bites are panned left and right. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you generally want uh, the voice of the guy who's talking coming from the middle. So what we want to do is center pan all these uh, clips. So select all the sound bites or all the master clips that you want to center pan. Go to clip and just click center pan. You sure? Yes, I am. And all the clips are now center panned and you don't have to go through each clip and center pan each one of them by hand. Okay, now let's do some quick editing. We'll start with uh, clip one, just because, uh, you know, it has a great name. Again, this is our stereo clip. And uh, let's check this out, especially the beginning. There's uh, some host saying something. She sounds kind of weird. Oh my God, there's somebody talking. And of course, we don't want that. We don't want somebody talking on our clip because we want to voice over that uh, later ourselves. But luckily, we have two stereo tracks. So maybe one of them is without the voiceover, huh? So let's check uh, out each one individually by soloing each one. There's the little S button for soloing. You could also mute the other one by hitting the mute button. In this case, as we have only two tracks, it doesn't matter. But generally, if you want to uh, listen to a single track, just solo it. Ah, there's the guy talking. So let's solo the other one. Ah, there's nobody talking. That's great. So let's use this one. So we'll edit track two into our sequence. So let's start this clip when we hear the music. There's generally two ways to go to the first frame of music. Let's show you one. I'll just listen to it and we'll do it by listening and not by visual cues. Ah, okay. There you can hear it starting around here. And now let's scrub through the audio one by one by holding down the shift key and going uh, forward or backward one frame in this case, backward. Yeah, there's something. Oh, there's nothing there. So this has got to be the first frame of the audio. So let's start there. Another way, of course, to uh, look at this is by checking out the waveforms. If you don't have it uh, on a shortcut, it's here in the fast menu of the timeline audio data waveform. Normally in the sequence, you can also open the track control panel and enable waveforms for each clip. That doesn't work in uh, the master clip, however. If you look at the waveform, there you can see it's starting right here. Great little tip on displaying waveforms. Uh, you can increase or decrease the height uh, of the waveforms 
by hitting uh, command option K or L. So I can make these waveforms larger or smaller by hitting command option K or L or in Windows it's uh, control alt K or L. There we go. You can definitely see that this is where the audio starts. So that's our in point. Get back to our sequence and edit the thing into our sequence. And now let's quickly add a sound bite. And that's basically all we need. Now we have really the most simple audio edit ever. It's interesting, but You've probably noticed it doesn't sound very smooth. It's interesting because so what we can do is add a quick dissolve here at the end of the music. There you can hear the music going on, so let's trim this like 10 frames to the left. Listen to it again. It's interesting because you can see That's pretty good. By the way, one of the things that I hear uh, way too often and that happen a lot is that uh, if you edit a soundbite or anything into your sequence, and right at the cut, you hear uh, a small pop that is, uh, without going too much into the technical details, it's basically because you cut the sound in, in a frame that it doesn't like to be cut. <laughs> and uh, that's why it pops. And you can remedy that pretty easily by just uh, putting a one frame dissolve on it. And the pop will be gone. It's interesting. So... Uh, Really, really. If whenever I hear that on TV, I just, or wherever, I it's it's driving me crazy. So uh, think about the one frame dissolve. <laughs> if you uh, you know, if there's anything that you learned today, it should be the one frame dissolve. If you didn't know about it already, anyway. So I I hope you enjoyed this show. I, I've gotten a lot of email uh, asking about uh, audio tutorials, and you know, I'm not really sure if. if if I'm covering anything here that anyone would, would would really like to know about, or if it's if it's so basic that you know you're you're sitting there and thinking, okay, so uh, why don't you tell me anything new? Um, so it would be great if you if you just gave me a short <laughs> feedback on on that. All right. Uh, in the meantime, do check out avidscreencast.com and subscribe to the show uh, via iTunes or an RSS feed or check out older shows. And if you have any comments or suggestions, write them to mail at avidscreencast.com or just comment on the website or reply to me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast or on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. If for some reason you'd like to know what kinds of things I do in my day job, check out editguy.de. Alright, again, thanks for watching. Have a great week. Goodbye.